All right, welcome back to another Southside Barbecue Home Cook. Today we're going to be showing you how we do our brisket with balusami sauce over rice. Let me tell you, all that potato salad, tacos, and sandwiches are all good, but nothing tastes better than simple white rice to complement your meat. All right, here we have a regular degular 10 kilo brisket from Costco. It's not bad in terms of quality, but it's not a ray of sunshine either. But 10 kilos at $150, huh, who are we to say no? Just an indication on how pricey these meats are and why we have to charge what we charge. You're not getting chicken drumsticks marinated in soy sauce and onions cooked on Uncle Siaki's gas burner here. Nah, this is brisket cooked low and slow. Anywho, first we're just going to start by manscaping our meats on the bottom side. We're just going to remove all this fat like the gastro sleeve. We're going to keep all our trimmings just to create some nice smoky beef tallow to wrap our brisket in. As you can see this big chunk of hard fat, we're just going to trim down just to make sure all our surfaces are smooth for good airflow. We don't want any uneven surfaces or edges as that smoke can catch and it can burn up real good. Okay, we're going to start on our top side now. and I like to leave a little bit of fat about 25 millimeters or a quarter inch. Just for protection, moisture, but most importantly, flavor. Oh, mate, you're kidding. Sometimes you have little surprises like this gashing. You just have to make it do. Hopefully, it doesn't affect our slices too much. As you can see, we have a big mound on top. We're going to remove that as it's mostly hard fat. And like we said before, we want a smooth surface for good aerodynamic smoke flow. So nothing gets burnt. Oh, the last time I had something sticking out and getting burnt was at a Mormon social. Those Mormon girls are something else, let me tell you. Shout out to the Dr. Yuckfoot Chow. So all these meat trimmings are going to become snacks for the chef. All that hard fat, we're just going to smooth it down. Now these corners are a little too thin to withstand 12 hours of heat. And they'll just curl up and burn, so that's also becoming a snack. We're also going to trim off this grey band of meat on the other side. Now the tricky thing about brisket is it's two muscles connected by a thick lining of fat. A lean muscle called the flat and a fatty muscle called the point. The tricky thing is trying to cook them evenly at the same time. They either turn out drier than Kevin Hart's jokes or undercooked and tough. But once you find that sweet spot, huh, that's when the toes will start curling. We, oui. She's all trimmed up now. Big Mama's rocking the landing strip. We got our fat trimmings for our teller. We also got some meat trimmings as an offering to the chef gods. Let's put some oil of Olay on Big Mama. Now, with every good relationship, we're going to pay attention to the bottom. We're just going to use warm water as a binder for your rub. You can use mustard, hot sauce, or whatever for your binder. But this cook is already costing me over 200 bones. So Big Mama's only getting a glass of water tonight. So, right, we got some kosher salt that we're going to cover our brisket in first. Now, remember, it's a big piece of meat, so don't be afraid to pile on that salt like some of the guys in the comment section do. Huh, I forgot some of you guys were trained under Gordon Ramsay. Well, one thing Uncle Gordon will say is don't forget to season the sides as well. We're going to give Big Mama another glass of water to lay our black pepper down. Now, your black pepper plays a key role in developing an extravagant bark. We're going to come around with some garlic powder just to add that savory hit to our rub. Oh man, this is going to taste absolutely phenomenal. Okay, we're going to repeat the process on our fat side. Now this is going to create a stunning bark on our brisket. Not only is she going to look like Miss Hair Lala, but she's going to taste like Kunta Kinte's Freedom Papers. Oh, this brisket is going to taste absolutely ravishing. I promise. Star light, star bright, first star I see tonight. So it's about 10 p.m. here on the south side, and it's time to get our smoker up to temp. Now, we're going to start by creating our cold bed just to get us through our cook and to achieve that. We're going to use a full chimney of coals. We're going to lay down some wood splits just to get the party started right. We're using iron bark, which burns hot and gives ravishing smoke flavor to our meat. Now, we want to get our smoker to between 260 and 270 Fahrenheit. All right, we're sitting there at 266. Oh, I like that number. Big Mama's going to take the center stage. And we want to put her fat side towards the fire just so it takes on the brunt of the heat throughout the cook. 
looking good. All right, we got our fat trimmings that's going to render down and create some tallow. We got our water pan just to keep the situation moist. We're going to check back in maybe four hours. All right, four hours in and our two muscles have a 20 degree difference. That's all good though. We just got to trust the pros. Golly. You can see she's taking on a ravishing tan, looking like she's been mowing the lawns all day. All right, we're just gonna spritz these edges that are starting to crisp up. Ooh wee, looks like Chef Schnacks are ready to be consumed. I can't wait. Wow, our beef trimmings uh, let themselves go. Look at all that smoky tallow. I'm just gonna top our water pan up and we're gonna let her ride this one on out. <sighs> top of the morning to you. Now we're about seven hours in and as you can see that bark has a real showroom sheen. Jeez Louise, looking like a young Annie Crummer. Now we haven't spritzed our brisket at all throughout this cook, but we're just going to give it a good dousing of some Worcester sauce. It's just to give it some more color and a hit of umami flavor. Oh man, I can't wait. Oh man, I'm ready to eat my hands right now. Sheesh. Shut the front door. Big Mama looking like a tax return chick. Looking good. Now, once you're happy with your bark and the fat just collapses at the slightest touch and doesn't bounce back, that's when it's time to wrap our brisket up to get her over the finish line. Now, as you can see, both our flat end point are sitting neck and neck like the Siamese twins, both at 178 Fahrenheit. All right, it's time to wrap that brisket up. Now what we're using today is some butcher's paper. You can use foil, but I find butcher's paper lets Big Mama breathe. Where foil will just trap all that steam and soggy up that crispy bark we worked so hard to achieve. All right, we have our smoky beef tallow. You know, that's going to add another dimension to any cook. We're just going to lay some of that down just to soften up the bottom of our brisket a little. As it's just taken on almost nine hours of heat jumping. Gee willikers. Look at that. Big Mama's out here looking like Burner Boy. That bark, though. Dark, crispy. Now, I see some people add tallow to the top of their brisket in the wrap. But why do that when you've spent all that time trying to develop the texture on that bark? Huh. All right. Now, we're just going to fold this butcher's paper up. We start by folding our sides in. Then we roll our brisket over twice so the fat side is on top again. Just fold our excess paper underneath and we're just going to finish this off in the oven because it's already taking all the smoke it can and we don't need to waste wood to finish our brisket off. Ooh-wee. Now we took this to about 203 Fahrenheit and it's been resting for about three hours. Now let's cut into her and see what Big Mama's thinking. Okay, let's start with our lean side, our flat. Oh man, I can't wait. Golly, that moisture, that smoke ring. Oh man, let's look at our point. Oh, for Pete's sake. See that fat is nicely rendered. Oh, clean up an aisle five, we got a spill. But you know what, that's enough of the window shopping. It's time to sample the product. So let's start with some slices from the flat end. Oh man, this knife is just running through this brisket like crooked cops at a red light. Oh my goodness. Sheesh, look at this beautiful, are you kidding me? That fell apart like a dysfunctional family. Golly, that beefy flavor. <laughs> All right, let's get some slices from our point. Now they say this slice right here is the best slice of beef on the whole cow. Now this here you'll cut into cubes and make into burnt ends. But let's see what our point end, our fatty side looks like. Oh man. Golly, mate, as they say in England, Wumale case. All right, now, we're just going to make Chef a nice plate. So we just got some fluffy white rice with some lean slices. And we're going to complement this brisket with some ravishing balusami sauce. If you've ever had corned beef, balusami, and rice, that's pretty much what this is. But on steroids. Guys, if you've never tried smoked brisket before, make sure you give this recipe a try. It's a process, but you'll have your neighbors begging you to make this at the next Sunday lunch. I promise. Golly.